So James, what is it like to bring Steel to the forefront? He's a big part of this movie. He's the fan of the movie in the movie. What what is it like for you to give him some time to shine? Um, it was uh, gratifying. I mean, that's part of the reason we set him up in Throne of Atlantis was that I knew eventually we would tell the story and. Um, I thought it was important to establish a continuity for the fans, even though they didn't realize it at the time. Um, and so, he's one of those characters, we've done him before, he was on uh, Superman the Animated Series in an episode, and we made sure he was part of the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, so, um, you know, he's a, he's a great character, he's kind of uh, DC's Iron Man in his own way, so, um, I don't know, he's a cool guy, and I think he represents uh, a particular fan perspective because he's, he's a fan who actually becomes a hero, and that's very unique, whereas Jimmy represents a fan. <laughs> Or pal, you know, he represents the person who wants Superman, who wants to know Superman, and Steel represents someone who's been inspired by Superman to also do good deeds and and try to be a hero. So he's very specific in that way. I said, I spoke with Sam about this. Lois seems to be the heart of the film. What was it like to bring that moment where she's in the bar with Lois and Diana, and it's just a very emotional moment where they can just forget everything and just talk about Kal El the person and Clark and how great he was. That, that was a scene I, I specifically asked for. Um, I wanted, I didn't want, because of the way we had to do it, um, we had one movie where Superman and Wonder Woman were dating and then we had the next movie where suddenly they haven't been and Lois is in the scene and in the picture. So I wanted, I wanted for the audience to feel that Lois and Diana were okay and, and actually capable of being friends around Clark. Meaning, um, I didn't want them to be adversaries. I didn't want it to be a competition, which is also why we had Lois appear in Throne of Atlantis, and we planted the seeds of her attraction to Clark, even in that movie. What was it like uh, updating the uh, backstory of the Eradicator, making him a uh, projection to protect Superman as opposed to what he was originally in the 90s version of the comic? Well, we have a thing called the squint test. and. Uh, to this, if you can describe a character on the back of a business card, that's a good description. The 90s version of Eradicator would not fit on a, a box of business cards. <laughs> so we had to like compress him, you know, and yet keep his, his motivation at least close. He had to be from Krypton or, or be a representation of Krypton and he had to be, there had to be a reason why he was acting as Superman. So we came up with kind of our own version of that. Um, I prefer it. Oh, I yeah, it. It <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's a lot of what we do is try to take what's in the comics and boil it down to its essence so that people who haven't read the comic can understand and get in, get enjoyment out of the character and then hopefully find the comic book and, and discover all the other layers that we didn't show. So. What are you most proud of from this film? Um, I'm proud that um, people actually were genuinely moved by Death of Superman and then this film when they had already seen versions of this story before. <clears throat> we, we kind of felt it was an uphill battle, you know, with the Doomsday animated movie and then BVS and even other episodes of her, his, the TV show which we, we worked on where we, you know, killing Superman is a trope now. So to make that resonate with people, <clears throat> yet again, uh, I'm gratified by that.